And I know that you receive them there where you are right now. We'd love to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 4019. Text them again to 407 490 4019. We'd love to pray for you. The word says with two or more gather in his name that he's in the midst of us. And we know that there's power in his prayers, in his word, in his name, Jesus. We'd love to uh, declare Psalm 91. Let's declare that together. So go with us to Psalm 91, and let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you dwell you. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hand he shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on the foot. Because, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. The Lord my God will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And now Pastor Shreve is going to bless us with the Bible study. Awesome. Praise is good. God is always good, right? Yes. And he is in the business of doing his job. Yes. And we should be in our business of doing our job, isn't it? Amen. Yes. Which is to praise him. Amen. Which is to worship him. Which is to Amen. appreciate him for what all he is in our lives. Hallelujah. You know, many times we need to understand we, we uh, the devil always is in the business of stealing, killing, and destroying. Oh, yes. That's all he's got as a job. So uh, if he is busy doing his job, Jesus said, I have come that you might have and enjoy life to the full till it overflows. Amen. If he is busy stealing, we should be busy enjoying. We should be busy enjoying life. We should be busy rejoicing in the Lord. Yeah. Again, I say rejoice. Yeah. We always make a choice every day. Every day. No matter what happens, I'm going to enjoy my life. Today. Yeah. Today. So that, you know, that, that is the best way you can get, uh, 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 get the devil upset mm -hmm. when you enjoy your life. Today. You know, there was a, a scientific research that was... Uh, done once and in that research they found out uh, your brain doesn't know the difference between whether you fake left or real left. Mm. Okay. So that means you can happily fake laugh it. Yes. <laughs> and make your brain think you happy. Mm -hmm. And then because of that what happens you build happy neurons. Mm -hmm. Your brain is not getting stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be free from it. So yeah. one time I saw a park where these people, I thought they were nut jobs. <laughs> Let me be very honest. Because they were standing in the park and on purpose laughing. Yeah. Oh my that is their exercise in the morning. They're laughing. I'm like, dude, you guys lost your mind. <laughs> but thank God we don't have to do those sort of an exercise, we have enough of laughter here, right here. Because we have a lot of characters right here that will make each other laugh, right? We really don't need that. And then, <laughs> I think that some, yeah, somebody got something going on here. You know, we just drank water, right? 
Nothing no. else? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get into the Word of God today. So we've been doing our study. Now, this is the real transition. Like, look at this. So we've been doing our study on lamentations. Yep. <laughs> which is crying out loud. Not laughing out loud. It is crying out loud. Okay. Um, one of the uh, important things that Jesus gave us as an instruction is to cry. Mm. It, it, it's important as much as uh, I for me personally I don't like crying. I don't like people crying. I don't like crying. I can it just somehow makes me so uncomfortable. But when I come to know the power of crying and how it can really transform things which is, which is lamentation, which is mourning out aloud, loudly. Like it, it, it comes to a place where it is like, it's too much on you. The burden, when the burden is too much, you have to cry. Mm -hmm. There is no other choice for you. You can't, you can't uh, 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 be like, uh, uh, I, I'm gonna uh, ride through this wave. No, mm -hmm. everybody will break down. Yeah. If they don't break down, they got depression. Mm -hmm. One or the other. Yes, sir. So um, I think it's best to cry rather than having depression, right? Yes. yes. Uh, having a nervous breakdown or whatnot, no, I don't think if you look at it like that. But here, um, Jesus gives an instruction in the book of Luke, 23rd chapter, 28th verse, where it says, But Jesus, turning to them, said, These people were crying for Jesus. You know, many times we waste our time and energy in crying, it, this is a common scripture, we've been studying on it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the most important thing, this is a story, this is an incident, where all these uh, women were crying for, uh, for Jesus, because he's been crucified. Yeah. He, because he's, he thought uh, 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 some injustice is happening to them, these women were crying so badly for it. But then Jesus turns to them and says, while he was carrying the cross, it almost uh, sounds to me like, don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. Because many times we cry for things that are worth garbage. You better say it again. We are wasting our cry on something that is not even going to make any difference. Mm -hmm. But in here, Jesus was giving an instruction. Rather, you, you direct your cry in such a way you can make a difference. Use it for your advantage. Using the cry for your advantage. Uh, Luke 23, 28. I'm going to read this again. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity that God is, Jesus is giving us, a direction that he is giving us, how, where, and which way you can take this. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the purpose of why he created us to be somebody who cries. Mm. He created us to be like that. God created us in his image. Remember, Jesus also cried. Jesus cried, but Jesus never cried for himself. Think about that. Mm. Jesus never cried, why am I in this situation, Lord? Why is this? Why is that happening? And all those kinds of things. You don't see that. Mm. But instead, he was crying for the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crying for the things that are, that are in a state that needs to be changed, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be corrected. So now, I believe Jesus is giving us, uh, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. Jesus is leading us into a ministry that is his. You know, he always uh, tries to bring us to a place where we can operate like him. Like him. He wanted us to imitate him, right? Part of the limitation is this lamentation. When you are uh, 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 crying out loud, when you are coming from the depth of your heart, when you are coming, bringing that cry out, that lamentation is so important for God. And then he says, I'm going to store all them tears. He's storing all those tears. Not the ones that you wasted on, uh, on because 
uh, uh, some something uh, is happening or uh, uh, just because you just identified you you, you gained 10 pounds <laughs> none of none of those te tears matter but but the real tears that matter is when you are crying for something God has put in you you know many times God will be leading us to places. Sometimes the biggest thing for me was my deliverance came out of lamentations. My deliverance came out of my cry. Amen. Many times we don't understand the power of crying for yourself. How we need to cry for ourselves. I, I'm making an attempt today is the uh, uh, last part of this uh, uh, Bible study. God willing, we'll be able to finish this today. So let's go with me to the book of Lamentations, chapter 5. Lamentations, chapter 5. This uh, is um, a prayer for restoration. If you look at this from the beginning on, uh, the writer who most of the people will believe is Jeremiah, but a few don't believe that. But either way, whoever it is, we know the inspiration is from the Holy Spirit. The writer have gone through a, a, a journey. You know, many times we don't, we expect God to bring life-altering change in our lives, but it is never going to happen without a cry at the end of the story. A cry that comes from deep within, from your heart, from, from the bottom of your heart. That is what I'm talking about today. Why? Because uh, this man saw the plight of Jerusalem. He saw what was happening with Jerusalem. He saw how things are falling apart, how they, be, they have become slaves. Now that is where the key is for our prayer, for our successful prayer life. Can you identify what you lost? Can you identify what is taken away from you? When you don't see that, you don't cry. Many times people are complaining about their lives because they haven't seen the things that have been stolen from them. If you see them as something that has been stolen, what do you do? You will identify the thief. And you immediately, if anybody, like any time when a robbery or a, a theft happens, when the cops come, the first thing they ask, can you identify what was stolen? Amen? Amen. You have to tell them what was stolen, otherwise it's not part of it. If you yourself cannot identify what is stolen from you, what is he going to restore? What are you going to cry to be restored? We know the scripture where the Bible says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his agenda. So now if it is his agenda, he should have stolen something from you. He should have destroyed something from you, or he should have uh, uh, taken something away from you. So now, instead of taking it for granted and moving on, oh, this is life, Let, let's move on. No, no, no. There is something else that we have to see. So I'm, I'm, I'm moving it from... from just being an individual response. Individually, if something is stolen, this is where many people can be healed because they don't see their health has been stolen. Yeah. If you don't see it as somebody is stealing it from you, yeah. you won't fight for a restoration. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. If you see for yourself, okay, this has been stolen from me, what do you do? You go for the fight, this belongs to me. How dare you take it away from me? Amen. Amen. How dare you take away my peace? How dare you take away my joy? How dare you take away my health? How dare yes. you? Yes. Unless and until you identify that as your possession. My life, I should be here. I would cry every day when I am not making enough money. 
Why should I be here, Lord? I'm not able to give to somebody. I would cry. God, bring me to a place where I can be a blessing to somebody. Your cry will bring you to places that you cannot go by yourself. God is looking for, Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart. The broken heart always bleeds, that brings forth that cry. This man saw this Jerusalem, a city, a prophetic city, a city of the hill on which, the, you know, everything is built. When you, you know, when Jesus is coming back, he's not coming back to D.C. Thank God for that. Yeah. He's going to be reigning from Jerusalem. Amen. True. Now, I want you to understand something. When you don't see the purpose of things, when you don't see the purpose of you, when you don't see the purpose of the child that is in the womb, Come on. We are becoming a society where we celebrate killing somebody in the womb who doesn't even, who didn't even get a chance. Right, mm -hmm. right. Come on. Mm -hmm. there. Because we are not seeing the purpose of it. What could their life bring? Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. What could that add to us? That's, the, the, that's one of the things I really, it really bothers me and bugs me, particularly because it happened on and on and on and again and again. It happens in the black community so much. These people bring in uh, uh, this Planned Parenthood and put it right there in the neighborhood so they can kill these babies. Yes. Right on there. Preach it, preach it. True. Come on. Right on there. Yes. True. Amen. And that's where you have to figure out to fight. How dare you? Right. How dare you touch my babies, yes. my kids, my grandkids? How dare you? Yes. My region, my, my, my locality is not supposed to be known as the poor income community. It is blessed to be a blessing. Amen. That is the restoration you fight for. When you see things going haywire around you, don't walk away from it. Instead, you pray and cry for a restoration. Something got stolen from you. Your youth has been stolen from you. Bless God. God has a plan of restoration. That is this cry about. Okay. Yes. This cry is about that restoration. Yes. So first and foremost, I, I challenge everyone and I encourage everyone. Let us identify what is stolen. Yes. Stolen goods. Okay. We need to know what is stolen. When we don't see it as a stolen thing, we are not filing a complaint. Right. Yes. Come on. Okay. okay. <clears throat> It starts as this. It says the title of this thing is itself prayer for restoration. The lamentation all the way comes to a place where it lands at a prayer for restoration. Yeah. This cry has gone for days. Yes. Many times gone for decades. This is intercession. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't just be like, oh, I bind you, devil, get out. It's not going to be over. Mm -hmm. Let me be very honest. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be over because there are principalities, there are powers, there are forces that are fighting against you. So many of them. Mm -hmm. So many of the forces are hindering your healing. Mm -hmm. yes. Your own deliverance. Yes. That's why he wants you to give up because the healing has already been released. Yes. The deliverance has already been released. Everything has been activated. Yeah. But the problem is if he can make you so gullible and make you give up that this doesn't belong to you. Yes. yes. Come on. I'm not losing anything. I'm already in pain anyway. Hey, I'm already in pain anyway. Yeah. What's the big deal? I'm going to believe in this healing. Mm -mm. Come on. The doctor said I don't have... A, 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 a healing for me. The doctor said they don't have a medication for me. You know what? Bless God, I have God. I'm going to hang on to Him. I'm going to hang on to Him no matter what happens. People already wrote me off. People already wrote me off. Why do I care if somebody says I don't fit for this job? Why do I care I don't fit for this role? 
Now he reads, remember, O Lord, what has come upon, come upon us. Now my question is, do you remember? Do you remember what, you, what is stolen from you? Yes. What is yours that has been taken? Because I'm setting you up for a battle that I know you can't lose. Amen. Amen. I would like for us to get in a battle that you, I know you can't lose. You know, if some investor, in, investment banker comes to you and tells you that you trust wholeheartedly, that that person comes to you, I want you to go invest in this some, some sort of a stock. I know for sure this is going to work. You trust that man. You know him. He was with you and faithful with you. What would I do? I would invest. Because I trust that man. I trust his judgment. I, he has been faithful for me. That's what Jesus is. Mm. Jesus is for us. He has been faithful. He has been true. He never failed. His word never failed. So it is time that we take a leap and make an investment. Which is your lamentation. Lamentation is an investment. A leap of faith. It requires a leap of faith. <laughs> I'm going to get back what, I, what has been stolen from me. Amen. Yes. Every single every penny, yes. every, every single dime. minute, yes. every dime. single moment every of my dime. life, I'm going to have that restored. Every dime. Yes. Now, I, I, I want you to remember, don't just, don't just walk away from things. Remember this. I, I still hear people talking about, okay, you know, uh, the people take, take, took away a prayer from school. Now, how are you interceding for it? Don't just talk about it. Are you interceding for it? Amen. Are you wrestling for it? Are you, are you crying for it? Lord, I need prayer to be restored back in our schools. Yes. Not these agendas that are going so popular out there. Yes. All these LGBTQ agendas or godless agendas, what not is being taught everywhere. Everything is being taught except God and the fear of God. Amen. Yeah. Remember, O oh Lord, what has come upon us. Look and behold our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens. What is yours have gone into enemy's hands. That's Remember true. that. That's true. Right now, I'm going to tell you something. Right now, your inheritance is being used by some joker out there. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Your inheritance right now. Is being used mm -hmm. by some joker out there. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that. God is in the business right now. Remember, this year is a year of transfer. He is transferring things into our lives. This is part of us positioning. That which belongs to me belongs to me. Not them. That's right. Not them. But for me. And our houses to foreigners. This was this was the revolution, American Revolution. Think about that. If you really study the history of this nation, it is not because the Britishers were here. It is because they were living in the houses. It is because they were living in their houses. Now I want you to think about that. What is living in your house? If you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, why in the world the sickness is living in you? Yeah. Man. Are you with me now? Yes. This is where I'm going. I want to take this battle personal in my community, in my race, in my in my society, in my nation. I want to take this battle everywhere. Anything that has been stolen, you think it is stolen? Start claiming. That is your lamentation. I'm asking so many of us today. We I pray that God would ignite us. And even open your eyes to see what the devil has stolen from you. Because yes. Yes. you're blaming wrong people for it. No. You're blaming wrong okay. people for it. And because of that, you are not even able to restore. Mm. Our inheritance has, has been turned over to aliens and our houses to foreigners. Mm -hmm. We have become orphans and waifs. Uh, our mothers are like widows. We pay for the water we drink, and our word comes at a price. Look at that. They are complaining about every single thing. 
Paying for water, their own water. Why are we paying for? Amen. Our own thing that we labor and then see. They pursue at our heels. We labor and have no rest. We have given our hand to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Trading everything of your life for a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. When we have been given the bread of life. Yeah. Uh, the bread of life. Uh, yeah. We have been given the bread of life, yeah. but we are struggling. But we're Someone else, somewhere. Think about that. That means we are, we are, we have to come to a place, a state of mind. We have to think, I can't be in here, Lord. I can't be in here. I'm getting by, Lord. No, no, no. You're not called to get back. No, no. indeed. You know, remember Jesus himself tackles this problem where he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that go proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. That means you have an opportunity to build your bread from His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. From His Word. If God can pour manna from heaven, I know, I know, when I am struggling and nobody plays, I'm sitting in a place, this poor old woman comes and knocks on my door and gives me four things of fruit and walks away. I just feel like giving it to you today. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. That's all she said. That was the first time and the last time she ever have done that to me. I was starving. Nobody knows that. But bless God, He made sure there is a provision for me. Hallelujah. That is so true. Our fathers. Sin and are no more, but we bear their inequities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. Look, they're still looking for people to deliver them. Oh. We're still looking for a Messiah to come. No, 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 actually we are looking for Moses to come when God has given us a Messiah. True. Amen. We get our bread at the risk of our, oh, our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin is hot as an oven because of the fever of famine. They ravish the women in Zion. You know, look at it. what they are doing. They are taking away what belongs to someone else. If you are in the right place, you give to what belongs to them. Are you with me here? Why you have to be in a place to bless others is because you can give the right person the right portion. Otherwise the people out there are in the business of doing what the devil does. To steal, kill and destroy. The maidens of the, in the cities of, uh, uh, of Judah, princesses were hung up by their hands. And elders were not respected. Young men ground at the millstones. Boys staggered under loads of wood. Look at this. The young man who should be driving the future is stuck. Doing things. That are not even rewarding them. It should bug you so much when a young man is, uh, is selling weed out there on the street end. It should bug you so much if someone is trying to sell uh, uh, drugs, some young people are trying, trying to sell drugs. It should bug you, it should make you cry. Lord, can you deliver this, my son? Lord, I need you to touch that person today. I need you to give him a hope. I need you to change this person. When you see a young girl trying to sell her body, it should bug you so much. It should bother you. That's my daughter. That's my granddaughter. That's my brother. That's my sister. They shouldn't be doing that, Lord. Amen. This is not how you have designed yes. them. This is not how you have designed them. Maybe we are too much of discipline and less of lamentation. Maybe we need to flip it a little bit. Let's do more lamentation and less of discipline. Because you and me we very well know our discipline doesn't bring all the results. True. Amen. Mm -hmm. But God's conviction does. Mm -hmm. God's conviction does. Let's fight for that. 
The, the elders have ceased gathering at the gate and the young men from their music. It kind of reminds me of the American Pie song. <laughs> the joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. The, the crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us for we have sinned. We as a community need to repent. We as a nation need to repent. We as a race need to repent. We as a family need to repent. We as an individual need to repent. Because of this our heart is faint. Because of these things our eyes grow dim. Because you are seeing so much of darkness all around you. Every day the fallen state. Every day the stolen state. The, every day your eye is getting, getting dim. That means you can't see a future. You can't see a future for yourself. Because you are surrounding yourself with this vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. This vicious cycle. It always this is the best picture. I think the best depiction is in that movie Hobbit. Mm -hmm. When they walk into the forest, everything, no matter where they go, they're circling and circling and circling and circling. They are continually there. The life is being sucked out of them. They are be fighting with each other. They are getting so mad at each other. They are confused. They are in days. And all those kinds of things. Out of all these people, this hobbit is the only guy who starts to walk up. Amen. When he goes up and he comes out of that, he says, I can breathe. Oh, yeah. Many times our answer is look up. Amen. Amen. Because of this our heart is faint. Because of these things our eyes grown dim. Because of Mount Zion which is desolate. With, uh, with foxes walking about on it. You, O oh Lord, remain forever. You are thrown from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever? And forsake us for so long a time. Now he, this is where the prayer comes. Turn us back to you, O Lord. We will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Renew our days as of old. Maybe just for us to have a memory. Recent times this phrase have become so popular. Good or bad. This should be something like. Make my nation great again. Amen. Make my family great again. Yes. Make my race great again. Yes. Make America great again. Yes. Make it great, Lord. Yes. We once were there. Now why are we fighting? Now why are we here? My race was known to be the singers. Why are they not there? My family is known to be this. Why are they not there? My nation, we, we had God as the number one. Why is it not there? We as a nation, we always had in God we trust. Yeah. Why are we not there, Lord? Right. Can, you, can you restore us back to that place? Renew our days as of old. Yeah. Renew yeah. our days as of old. Maybe that's why people called it old glory. Yeah. I don't know. Many times we, you know, the new things, God always says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. I got, I got it. But also restore what was stolen, Lord. Yes. While you restore it to me, add new things. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. Yes. Amen. 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 He can add anything and everything he wants to add to me. But also restore what is stolen from me. Amen. That was his, his prayer. I want you to restore back. I want you to make me great. I want, you, I want you to burn up that passion in me, God. Maybe I once was hard for you. I am no longer hard like I used to. Can you burn me back? Can you rekindle me? Can you bring me to a place where I can worship you in my spirit and in truth? <clears throat> Can I become that person that could be your first soldier? You know, in the beginning, some of us, we know when we came to Christ, the first thing God asked, you're like, yes, sir, I'm ready. I'm going to do this thing. Now, God is somewhere in the faint. Somewhere out there. 
Maybe we can ask God, can you help me, Lord? Can you help me, Lord, in bringing you to the front? Can you, you know, we can cry that for our, for our, for our ourselves. For our family, Lord. Our family is known for this. Can we have our family restored, Father? Yes, yes, yes. Can we have our family restored? Anybody that have got, gotten on that ship and came to this nation, they came because they wanted freedom. Amen. They wanted to be able to worship God freely. Slaves ran away from the slavery. They fought it. They couldn't fight it. What not? Whatever has happened. They ran away so they may worship God. True. Amen. They may worship God. They came up. Even in slavery, they came up with songs. Lord, you are our freedom. Amen. Amazing grace. Yes. Amazing grace. How could you sing that when you are shackled? Mm -mm. True. That's lamentation. That's lamentation. How could you think of that? When you are being stolen from your homeland and being driven, your own brethren sold you to someone else. And now that someone else has shackled you and enslaved you. How could you come up with a song like that? That is lamentation. That is what we have to be crying for. That is what we have to be fighting for. Not all these things that government is giving or what not. We need to fight for what is mine. What is yours. So let me tell you something. What is yours is more than what you know. More than what you know. The devil has stolen so much from you. So much from you. Some of us are thinking it is over. I'm at the lag end. No, you're not. You're not at the lag end. Yes. Even if you are in the lag, lag end, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to walk out only, only like Samson. Only like Samson. Ouch. Only like Samson. Ouch. Samson. Bible Ouch. says he, he, he killed more Ouch. enemies on his last strike yes. than every day. Coming before. out. Come that is what God has called us to out. be. Yes. That is what he has planned for us. Yes, Joel out. chapter 2, starting at verse 23. I'm out. Joel chapter 2, 12, starting at verse 23. I'm here to tell you something. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Hallelujah. For he has given you the former reign faithfully. Hallelujah. Now this is a prophecy right here. For he has given you the former reign faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month the threshing floor shall be full of wheat can somebody say full, full. if you are not full that means you need some restoration and the wax shall overflow with new wine and oil now look at this this is what God is telling us here. So I will restore to you the ears that the swarming locusts have eaten, the calling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. My great army, which I sent among you, it will restore it for you. Amen. Now look at this. The same locust breed, but they are identified as different. I want you to understand this thing. God knows every detail of what has been stolen from you. And who did it to? Okay. And who did it to? Every single speck of it. Yes. And he has given us a promise. This is why you have to cry. This is why you have to cry. Because he promised us. He has faithfully promised us that I will restore to you the ears that swarming locusts have eaten. Restore to you ears. You are looking to undo what has happened in the past. But God is saying, no, 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 don't worry about undoing it. I'm going to restore everything that has been stolen from you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Maybe we are wasting our time too much in the past. 
wanting it to un be undone. But God is saying, don't worry about undoing it. Let me restore what has been stolen from you. Yes. Let me restore what has been eaten away from you. Yes. And he is even promising in the time. I will restore the time. If the devil have delayed you 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, God is saying I'm going to restore all of them. Yes. Get ready to have that on a fast pace in the name of Jesus. I receive it. That is the restoration you are lamenting for. That is the restoration that you are lamenting for. Restoration is at the end of your lamentation. Now, this is where I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you something clearly. I, 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 like, uh, like in the beginning when I was talking about, we can fake laugh and your brain will be fine with it. But you can't fake cry. Yeah. Because the one who is responding to your cry is the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay. He knows exactly where your heart is. Yes. He knows exactly. Many times I see people as soon as he, there are times I have seen people as soon as they say let's pray, they start crying. Mm -hmm. Why? You don't even care for me. You don't even know my name. But you started to cry as if God is going to respect that cry. He doesn't. He doesn't. Let us not fake our cry. I'm here to ask you, what is it that you can cry for? What is it that really moves you? Not excites you. People are so excited about doing this and doing that. I'm going to tell you something. If you are looking for that, don't waste your time in lamentation. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Lamentation is about really something that bugs you. You see orphans not being taken care. That's your lamentation. You should cry for that. No. You see somebody struggling because they are homeless. Yes, you should be crying for that. That's your cry. You have to lament for them. You see yourself not being able to make proper decision. You should be able to lament for that. Cry for what really is coming from your heart. From the heart. Your heart is craving, you know. You can't see that injustice happening to that young boy. You can't see that. Then you got to get on your knees and start lamenting. Start lamenting for that. That is the most important groundbreaking work that you can ever do. Without that, you cannot achieve your goals. You don't know how much of time I spend crying for this nation because this nation for me is so important. Yeah. I want to see this restored. I want to see the pulpit in this nation restored. I want to see that so because once the pulpit in this nation is restored, that is what makes this nation great. Amen. Amen. Come on. I cry, I cry, I cry for the pulpit. I want the Lord, Lord, can you change? Can you change how we are worshiping you? Can we move away from being a corporate church and to be your yes. body? Come on. Amen. Maybe that's not your cry. I'm okay with that. If you're crying about your race, do it. Amen. Your community, do it. Do, uh, crying about your, 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 uh, your um, uh, area, yeah, do it. Lord wants it used to be so prosperous, God. Mm -hmm. Used to be so prosperous, God. Why mm -hmm. is prostitution prevalent in my area? Mm -hmm. Why are my young brothers and sisters not being fruitful? If that is that is what makes you like get, get so connected. That is where you lament. That is where you lament. Let us cry for ourselves. And our children, like Jesus said. Yeah. Jesus gave us a command and an instruction saying, cry for yourself and your children. Yeah. Cry. Cry for them. Because when you cry, I will restore. When you cry, I will restore. Let that come from the bottom of your heart. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let your complaints transform into a cry. Let your, let your uh, complaints transform into a cry. When it becomes a cry, God is in the business of restoring. I'm going to read that promise again. It always excites me so much. Anytime I feel like I lost something, when money is stolen from me, when things are stolen from me, when my peace is stolen from me, when whatever is stolen from me, I immediately go to this scripture and say, So Lord, you said it. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't experienced the growth the way you wanted it to, but God is saying on the end, I'm going to restore it. I'm going to restore that to you. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. We can study on all those things, what they have, what they do on purpose. What, the, what is their job? I can identify them in our lives. What are they? Let me just put it this way. Something that took away from you. It doesn't matter what it is. God is in the business of restoring. Can you cry for that? That's why I encourage you again, less of the fighting, more of the crying. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting too much into fights with each other when you should be bowing and crying. We're trying to restore something that only God can restore through political power or through, through, through financial power, through this or through that. We are, we are using all substitutes to restore for us when God is the one that is promised restoration. I want my nation to be a nation that worships you, Lord. Yes. I want my nation to be something that can declare every day waking up saying, in God we trust. Yes, Lord. Amen. I want that. I want my kids and uh, kids growing up every day declaring Jesus is Lord. Indeed. Yes. yes. No matter where they go, whether Indeed. they're going to public schools or private Indeed. schools, nothing matters. Jesus yes. is Lord. Indeed. Indeed. At the end of the day, you know the time is coming when Jesus comes back. All these garbage things that the, 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 the state and the uh, uh, religion or the uh, church and the state separation, none of these things really matter. Because it's going to be a church rule all over. Remember Amen. that. When Jesus comes back, he's not going to leave the secular system. He's taking over the whole system. It's going to be a church system all over. So don't worry about being politically correct when you need to be Jesus correct. Amen. They don't like me. I don't care. Jesus is Lord. Hey. Amen. Jesus is Lord. I mean, we have opportunities. Most of the parents don't even know. They can, they can allow their kids to take their Bible to school. There is a day that they celebrate that where they can take Bible to school. How much are we encouraging our kids to do that? When there is the flag day, when we can go under the flag and pray. When you, when you are not praying there for that school, you know who is praying? Yeah. The Satanist is. Yes. yes. Yep. They want your kids. Yep. That's yes. true. Yes. That's right. And he says, when I restore it, 26 words, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Look at this. Right now we are struggling. <clears throat> you go to the store, you can't find this grocery or that grocery. You got to wait. For everything. It, for crying out loud, we are United States of America. If we are struggling here like this, imagine what is happening everywhere in the world. And what happens? The other day I saw this man. I can't, I can't hold myself. This man has a pickup truck. Um, he, and in his uh, truck bed, he put a top. And then he's filling up this whole trunk with gas. Oh my God. Because the prices are fixing to go up. Jeez. <laughs> when you see that, you're like, how stupid is that? Okay. How dumb is that? I'm like, you think that, but I'm telling you, wow. poverty makes people do bad things. Yes. 
Yeah. Amen. Yes. People do stupid stuff when they lack. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we lack things, we try to steal from others. That's why Bible clearly says, Jesus says, they shall not hunger, not thirst, because I'm going to give you abundantly. I'm going to give you all that you need. I'm going to restore everything to you so you don't have to look for someone else's stuff. Thank you, Lord. When I can bless you, when I can bless you, you don't need his stuff. You don't need your neighbor's wife when you yourself have been blessed with a wonderful wife. Amen. You have your own thing. God is in the business of giving you what belongs to you the best. Mm -hmm. If something has been stolen from you, may the Lord restore it for Amen. us. Let us cry for that. Yeah. The irony right now, it just makes me think, makes me, I'm like, you have, it, it, it's, it's like this thing. You have you 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 have a uh, hundred thousand dollars in your bank account, and you're begging for someone to give you five dollars. Mm -hmm. How does that look? How does that look? Isn't that what is happening with our oil? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move on. <laughs> then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Amen. I will never be put to shame. Come on, church. I will never be put to shame. Come on again. I will never be put to shame. Because of your God, you will never be put to shame. Because of your God. Let him restore things for you. Yes. Let him bring yes. back what has been yes. stolen from yes. you. Let's identify what has been stolen from us yes. so he can restore it back to you. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Now I'm going to tell you something. Nothing of God's restoration is going to be possible without his spirit being poured out. Yes, hallelujah. Now my answer would be, my question is, can we cry for a pour out of His Spirit? Yes, we can. Can we cry for a pouring, outpouring of His Spirit? Yes. yes. We need that outpouring in, our, in the schools. We don't need to do anything. When the Spirit of the Lord pours upon them, they will cry, they will pray, they will walk in the, in the paths of righteousness. Let us pray for an outpouring of the Spirit. Hey, love me. In here he says in the 28th verse, he says, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in heavens and in earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The, the sun shall be turned into darkness and moon into blood before the coming of the great awesome day of the Lord. A day of restoration. A day of restoration. It shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance and the law as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Who are you? I'm his remnant. I'm his remnant. I'm his remnant. Because he has called us. I'm going to ask a few questions. Can you identify what is stolen? Yes. Can you identify what is stolen? Now, my question here is, I have a simple question. What is a true cry? What is a true cry? A cry that cannot be faked. That is yours. That is yours. It comes from you. It comes from you. A true cry comes when you can identify what is stolen from you that belongs to you. Uh -huh. This is mine, God. This has been stolen from me. Hallelujah. That's where you cry. Hallelujah. This is my land, God, that Hallelujah. has been stolen Hallelujah. from me. 
This is my dream, God. This has been stolen from me. This is my youth, God. This has been stolen from me. This is my money. This has been stolen from me. This is my nation. This has been stolen from me. Can you restore that for me? Last week I gave you prayer points. I encourage you. If you want, you can have a copy of this again. I have all these list of prayer things that I like for us to pray on. I'm going to read this list quickly. The first part deals with yourself. The first three deals with yourself. Which is praying for repentance. Pray for a repentance. You have to pray for a repentance. Because sometimes we get so used to sickness, so, so used to sin, that we don't even think of it as sin. That's when the next part is, pray for exposure of covered sins. If I'm covering anything, God help me. Expose that. Expose that in me. The third one, pray for inner revival. Yes. David prays that prayer. David prays that prayer. Lord, can you revive my heart? Can you revive my heart? Instead of asking for a revival around us, let us ask for a revival in us. Yes. Then let's go for then let's go to the next step where we can pray for our community around us, our our city around us. Yes. Pray for the identity of our city. Yes. I don't know about you, I want my city to be identified as a city that worships the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. That puts God first. I don't need, I think the time has come, I don't need to worry about the secularism. Yes. I don't need because I need God to be in charge in anything and everything. Yeah. Anything and everything, Jesus is the Lord of my city. Let us pray for that identity. Whatever the false identity they have for our city, let that be broken. Let that be broken and let God restore its true identity in the name of Jesus. Pray for the leaders of our state. Devil and his allies are using uh, uh, the intimidating strategies. He is yeah. using so much. Yeah. Let us pray particularly for our state. We need. Yeah. I believe God has a plan and a purpose for this nation. Yeah. You know, for this particular state. With, with what is to come. Yeah. Let us stand with the leaders who are standing in right standing. Pray against the spirit of deception in our government. Yeah. They are being yes. deceived every day. They are being deceived, being told right is wrong and wrong is right. Yes. They are being deceived right now. Even, even in sports they are being deceived. Yes. It's a deception. It is only a deception. Let us pray. Oh, don't you love? I love anybody. It's got nothing to do with love. It's got everything to expose deception. Yes. Pray for righteous anger that deals with the true enemy. Yes, hallelujah. Don't forget our enemy is the, the battle is with the spirits. People when they don't identify the true enemy, they engage in a war that could cause more chaos to us than help. So let's pray that there will be righteous anger that deals with the true enemy. Pray for the church. Right now, I encourage you. Right now, uh, 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 right now, our president have gone to Europe where he is uh, getting ready to make some decisions with NATO. Let us pray that they don't go in any deceptive way. Yeah. Let the truth prevail. Let the, let the spirit of deception be bound. Let us stand in there. Let us at least do our job. Maybe yeah. they don't do it. That's okay. You do your job. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God reward you for your job. If they don't do their job, they will get their reward. You do your job to pray that the blind eyes be open, that they will not engage in anything foolish that is not of God. Amen. Now let us pray for the church in America. We need to pray for our church. 
Pray for the church in the, in, in the U.S. to move from being corporation to his body. Amen. We are running the church as a corporate. It's time that we become the body. It's time we become the bride. It's time that we be the people that would call Maranatha. Come, O oh Lord, we need you. Can you get us out of this sinful mess? Pray for a revival of the pulpit. Pray for prayer to take top place in the church. Okay. We need prayer in the church. My house shall be called a house of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. May the church be something that prays. Pray for prayer to take top place in the church. Pray for the church in the U.S. to showcase the real brotherhood to the church all over. Not just political, but spiritual power. I want the church in America to be restored so much. I believe God wants to revive the church in America so much that we will showcase what it is to have the later rain. What the Spirit of the Lord, when the Spirit of the Lord falls and the miracles are happening through the Spirit, that is going to be more contagious than ever before. Because we are showcasing the power of the Spirit. Pray for the body of Christ to not lose heart. The only way we can lose this battle if we lose heart. Let us pray. Let us continue to pray that we may not lose heart. As the body of Christ here. At this point, you may, you, may, you may not agree with many other denominations. I'm not here to ask you to agree with them. I'm asking you to pray with them. Amen. Pray for them. Hallelujah. Let us all pray for the Spirit of the Lord to fall afresh upon us. Yes. He promised to pour out His Spirit upon us. Amen? Amen. Let us, let us pray for them. Let us cry for them. May the Lord stir us up to a point where we can, where we can go into this prayer, where the Lord can restore things to us that belongs to us. Amen. Whatever the Lord is, has instituted for us, whatever the Lord has ordained for us, it is ours. Amen. 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 Personally, in my community, in every area that is around us, yes. God is in the business of restoring things. Amen. Amen. Glory. Let God let 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 you know um let God do his job in our lives. Yeah. Let God do his job in our lives. He can do his job best when we do our job. Yeah. Which is lamentation. We have to lament for our restoration. May the Lord show you any of the things that have been hidden. May the Lord bring you to a place where things, whatever is stolen from you, may you see what has been stolen so you may pray for a restoration. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's all stand to our feet so we may pray. Let us all come in agreement with God's plan to restore. Thank you. His plan is to restore to us. Hallelujah. Hi guys, what's wrong? You wanna go? Go. Come on. Don't keep doing that. <clears throat> Father, we come before you. We thank you for what you have taught us and what you are helping us to grow in. Here we are, Lord, submitting ourselves into your hands. Help us identify what has been stolen from us. Personally, even in our society, in our nation, no matter where it is, God, whatever has been stolen, 
You have promised to restore it back. Yes. We want your restoration. Help us also identify what has been stolen. Give us a cry that would change, Father. Yeah. That would change our nation. That would change our family. That would change me. Yeah. Most importantly, me, Father. Hallelujah. I need a revival for me. I need my heart to be in right standing with you, Lord. Yeah. I ask that you would continue to lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We ask nothing but your will to be done in our lives, in our city, in our state, in the United States of America, and on this earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.